All right, welcome to our tip number 38. In this one, we're going over a new ggplot2 extension called ggHalves, and it's for making half dot plots, half box plots, half pretty much any type of plots, and it's really cool. Um, so we're gonna make a diagram that looks like this, where we have a half box plot, and we also have a distribution here. So this is really important. We're gonna see here some of the issues that you can run into with box plots. If you just go off a box plot, uh, you can see that there's actually a bimodal thing going on here, and this means we need to explore it further. So uh, we'll see what this means here in a second, but this is what we're going to be creating, and this is a really useful application where you can get both distributions and box plots on the same plot. All right, so let's get started here. Um, what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be checking out this ggHaves package. If you want the code that you're seeing right now, check out our weekly R tips. What you need to do is you sign up for this newsletter and that gets you access to all of the code. And what I'm telling you, we've got a lot of code. So here I'm in my files and you can see there's one, two, three, four, all the way down to 38 R tips that we have. And we're going to be working out of this 38 ggHaves. Um, once you have this newsletter set up, you just do a git pull that's going to download the latest version of your uh, of, of the R tips newsletter and we're going to get all sorts of different R tips and we're going to be working out of 38 here. You just click this, open it up and then make sure you have your outline so you can follow along with me. All right, so once you've got everything set up, it's time to load some libraries. We're going to load the tidyverse, we're gonna load a tidyquant and ggHaves, and the data set that we're gonna be working with today is again, surprise, surprise, the MPG data set. This is a great data set. Um, we're gonna be able to see some of the issues and some of the uh, things that you can run into when you're trying to plot and understand distributions. So uh, say we have a question that we want to try and answer. We will take a look at this MPG data set and we want to understand what the highway fuel economy is um, as a distribution. Um, and we want to kind of segment it by uh, a grouping column. And we're going to be looking at the engine size, which is the cylinder. So you've got four cylinders, six cylinder, uh, six is a little bit bigger engine. You also have eight cylinder and there's even some five cylinder in there. So we're actually gonna filter out the five cylinder. Um, so this is going to take us down from 234 to 230 rows. And uh, that's just because there's not that many of these uh, five cylinder vehicles. We're then going to factor the cylinder column to convert it to a, from an integer to a group or a categorical. So now it's a factor. And then we're just gonna do a basic ggplot. We're gonna plot the cylinder as a function of the highway uh, fuel economy and we're going to use the GM jitter as our main GM. Um, we're going to use theme TQ just to make it a little bit more professional. So we get a plot that looks like this. Um, and you can see you've got four cylinders here, six cylinders and eight cylinders and then highway. And then what this GM jitter does is it makes the, this point plot with a little bit of a distribution. So you can definitely see there's a central tendency going on. Four cylinders seems to have higher highway fuel economy, six cylinder, which is a bigger engine, tends to have a little bit lower and then eight cylinder uh, you can see has the lowest. But what is really going on here? Uh, and this is what we want to be able to use things like box plots for is we want to understand the distribution. So we're going to, uh, again, do the same plot, but the only thing we're going to do is we're going to swap out geom jitter for geom box plot. Um, so this is basically the only difference uh, and I'm going to color outliers as red. So what a box plot is great for is starting to understand a distribution, but it doesn't give the full story. And this is where the uh, GG halves can really come into play is we've got a box plot um, and, it, and just has a line here. This is the median. And then you have your uh, 75th quantile and your 25th quantile. And then you've got some um, bars here and anything that's any data that's beyond the bar is considered an outlier. So these red dots are outliers. And you can see that the central tendency definitely tends to go down. But um, we'll see here that we've got some interesting things going on um, even within this that we can't see from this box plot. So that's where the half box plot and half dot plot comes into play. So this GG has package is really cool. We're going to swap out this geom box plot for geom half box plot and geom half dot plot. And I'm also going to add in some facets here. So this is a little bit uh, advanced and I teach this in my 101 course. But what we're going to do is we're going to, um, if I just run these lines of code, just swapping out, uh, you can see here what we're doing is adding a distribution in on the right hand side 
and adding the box plot in on the left hand side. So this is kind of like the same plot that we had previously on the left hand side. We had a box plot, but now on the right hand side, we're also having a distribution, a distribution that's being shown. And that's what's called a dot plot. Okay. Um, but this isn't the final plot. Um, I want to facet this out by the different, um, uh, by the cylinders. Uh, and then I want to apply some styling and some labels. So once I finish it, now I've kind of broken out the four cylinder, six cylinder and eight cylinder so we can see them. Um, and then I can see it versus the highway. And what this allows me to do is just kind of focus on each one individually. So this distribution is what I'm now interested in. So I've got the box plot, which, which is a measure of distribution, but it only shows the median and the quantiles. It doesn't show what's going on within those quantiles. And that's what is really important here to understand is that we've got a bimodal relationship going on with the six cylinder. So this means we need to investigate it further. We need to understand why are we getting a spike up here and why are we getting a spike down here in the six cylinder? And then if I look at the eight cylinder, we've got kind of a distribution here. So that's um, a telltale sign. And that's one of the useful things with this half dot plot is when you add these geom half dot plots and you just got to kind of add them in. They're they work the basically the same way as a normal geom, like geom box plot, but you just add half, half dot plot and you put your AESs in here. And, uh, and then you can uh, then see the distribution. So what I want to do next, now that I see this six cylinder, um, I need to investigate that further. So I'm going to filter out just the six cylinder, and then I'm going to run another geom box plot. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it in with the class. So that's this column here. We haven't seen that one yet. So this will tell the full story. So I'm just looking at the six cylinder right now and I've broken it out by class and I can see here that compact and midsize tend to be a little bit higher minivan and subcompact are kind of in the middle here and then what's dragging that down. So if I look at this previous plot where I had this distribution down here, that is because we have some pickups and SUVs that are six cylinders and those are dragging everything down and we have one minivan that, that has a low highway fuel economy. So that tells us more of the, the full picture. All right, so that's it for the R tip today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you want to learn more, I teach in my course. Uh, it's called DS4B 101-R. Uh, I have an eight week course on R for business analysis. You need to learn ggplot for visualization. You need to learn dplyr for data wrangling. And then I teach all sorts of cool stuff like modeling and uh, making reports and doing business analysis with R. Um, and then if you want to take it even further, I have another course called the five course R track that, that is insane. It's five courses. It teaches you web applications, shiny. It teaches you uh, data science. So you'll learn automated machine learning. You'll learn time series forecasting, and you'll learn the highest of the high end in the R programming language. So check that out if you, if you're interested in learning more.